Hey developers, today I'm gonna to show you how to do Vuetify forms. We're gonna look at validations and I'm gonna explain how you can get up and running using Vuetify on a Vue app and also a Nuxt app. So make sure you stay all the way to the end and I'll explain all about that. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of the Vue.js in action book, which if you're interested, you can get the first chapter for free. You just need to click on the link in the description below. And also if you're, if you're looking at the description, I have some of my favorite Vue courses, some of my favorite uh, courses that you can buy on Udemy. So all those links are in the description below. And if you buy a course, you can get it for like 10 bucks and it helps out the channel too. All right, so here is the Vutify website. You can go to vutifyjs.com. You can see, why did I choose Vutify? And the reason I choose Vutify is because it seems to be one of the most well-supported kind of design component frameworks, um, material design type frameworks for Vue.js. And then, you know, out of the box, you get a lot of things like accessibility, it has this really nice look and feel to it. It's really easy to add forms, buttons, a whole bunch of components into your view app without having to, you know, do it all yourself, which you know, could take a little bit of extra time. Certainly though, if you look at websites that are designed with material design, you can kind of see what they look like. Although you can customize a lot of this stuff if you want to. So let's just begin. Uh, first thing is if you're on a view system, you probably want to install Vue, uh, so Vue CLI. So if you, I have my command prompt open here, and so the way I would do it is, you know, do npm, or if you're using yarn, npm install at Vue slash CLI, and then tag G, and that'll install it globally. And then you can install Vuetify. So, well, first, if you have Vue CLI installed, then you can do Vue create, and then, you know, my new app, something like this, and that would create your app. And then to install Vuetify, if you look at the official documentation here, uh, you just do you change directory to the app you created and then do view add Vuetify. And that'll actually install it as a plugin into your view app. And it'll ask you a couple of questions, nothing too big, um, like choose your presets, default, prototype, or configure. And then it'll just kind of configure everything for you and it'll install everything you need to get started. If you're adding it to an existing look, uh, installation, you, there's a few more steps you can do. Um, you have to go into your, uh, you have to create a plugins file, and then you can, uh, you have to add it into your view object, but don't worry about that. I believe the plugin handles that all for you. Um, on this app, so this right here is a, an app I've been working on for a while. It's for a website called Dev Bootcamp, which I will be uh, mentioning more and more often in this channel. Right now it's just really in a concept phase, but I'm adding a little components to it here and there. But it's a it's a view, a Nuxt app, I should say. And to install um, view, uh, excuse me, Vuetify on this Nuxt app, I needed to install it a little bit differently. So instead of using the Vuetify official documentation through here, I actually use something officially from the Nuxt community. So the Nuxt community has different uh, repos in here that they officially recognize and Vutify module is one of them. So it's really easy to install. All you have to do is once you have your Nuxt app up, up and running and there's three or four ways you can get Nuxt running. I'm not going to go into it right now, but you know, watch some of my other videos. I, I definitely go into them a little bit more there. But once you have your Nuxt running, Nuxt app running, you can use, use Arn or of course Yarn or NPM. And it's easy as just doing NPM install like this and dash dash save dev or dash capital D and then that'll put the next uh, JS Vutify installed and then you need to do a little bit of configuration so the most part what you want to do is open your Nux config file like this and this will have all your configs for Nuxt and in this build modules you want to just go ahead and add in uh, Nuxt.js slash Vutify and that will give you essentially everything you need to get Vutify running on your application for Nuxt. Now, one thing I like to do is anytime I install an Angular or excuse me, not Angular or Vue or React material design library, 
is to actually our framework is to go in and adjust some of the colors and the CSS for it. And that and with this plugin, it makes it really, really simple. So what you need to do is you add this beautify object to the um, app here, as you can see. And then I just add an options path, and then I specify a beautify.options.js file. And if you look at the official documentation, there is a section on theming, which I think is in here. Theme. Yeah, right here. So this mentions all about themes, and it talks about customizing. customizing. So you can change this primary, secondary. So there's different color classes that are defaulted in throughout the app when you use the different components. And you can change what their primary and the accents and everything is. So you use this kind of option where you do themed, you make a themes object and then a theme, theme and then themes, and then you can put the light colors. And if you want, you can put the dark colors too. So, and you can actually have, um, you can either put the RGB colors in or you can import this util colors. And what this util colors is, is it has like some basic colors in there with different names. And then they have this darken one, black, accent three. So it's a way to get more granular with what type of color that you want when you uh, when you add it in there rather than having to put the, the hex in. So let's take a look at that. So here's my options path that I just added in. So I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to go to my beautify options file. And I'm going to go ahead and add in this uh, this options. Now the way it works, if we look at the official documentation again for this module, it says to go right down here. Yep, here you have the beautify, you put the option path, and then you can have this options object. So you can kind of change the breakpoints, the icons, language, RTL, or theme. So we really care about the theme. So if I undo this, by the way, this is just a real quick way of going through this. I'm actually undoing it if you <laughs> want to know what I'm doing. So here, here I'm doing theme themes, and I'm doing light. So I'm going to put my primary color is purple. My air is red with an accent of three. Uh, accent color shades yellow. Secondary is orange, and then I don't know purple five. I think is one of them. Let's see here. We'll just leave it colors purple. And uh, if you want to look, I actually pulled it up. Here is the actual file, so you can see everything like red has a light in five. Accent 5, Darken 5. So that's how it works. And they have a, a ton of them in here. All right, so so we have, we've overrode the defaults for the theme for the colors that we want. We've updated the Nux config file. We installed the library. So we should be able to uh, start working with this now. So, um, oh, one more thing I did. Um, I'm actually... Um, there is this extract CSS ignore order true. I found that for some reason in Beautify, I was getting little warnings in my console when I was running the app. So I just put this little snippet of line. It actually mentions it in the, in uh, I found a GitHub issue about it. And this gets, gets rid of the warnings. If you happen to have this warnings, I don't know if you will. And there's also one mention I'm using uh, you can see here, if you look at the documentation, if you're using TypeScript, it mentions to put in your tsconfig file, the Next.js Beautify in here um, as a type. So I did that too. All right, so what I want to do here is, is I'm going to start the server. I'm going to run npm run dev. And now, um, since I have all this saved, it should work, so I'm going to go in and here's my directory structure, and I'm going to create. I created a new folder called signin, and then in the signin I have an index file, and just uh, for the speed of quickness of this demo, I went ahead and just put in a bunch of SAS in here already, just to do a little bit of of um, uh, theming, not a little bit of of design already, so we won't have to worry about that. And just want to make sure it runs. I can open up localhost 333, and it should be slowly but surely trying to load here. Yeah, it's still building. It's a little bit slower on my computer. It takes a, a few more seconds. If you don't, by the way, if this looks a little different to you, if you're familiar with Vue, I use this Vue.extend because I'm using TypeScript support in Vue. I could use Vue classes, but I just kind of like it this way because I like to. Um, yeah, just a little bit easier, and I like having types. All right, so loaded. 
Uh, here's the, the main page of the website. It's Bootcamp Prep for Developers. Uh, if you check out my last video, I show you how I created this page. We went from start to finish. I showed you the CSS in it and uh, just how I got it up and running. This is actually an SVG. But since uh, if you don't understand Nuxt, you have this pages folder. And inside this pages folder is basically the directory structure of the app. So inside there, I have sign in, which would be a subfolder. And then I have index. So I can also create a, a just a sign in dot view file, but instead I just kind of created it inside this folder itself. This just personal preference. So now I'm going to go sign in. Okay, here we are. So the website's open here. You see, obviously we have nothing in it so far. So what I'm going to do is first, um, I have this V app at the top, and um, I'm going to go ahead and add in a container. And this is just going to help um, support us. It's going to have a max width 1140 pixels. And then I'm going to add a V form. And by the way, this V app, if you don't know, in Vutify, whenever you use Vutify, you always have to wrap everything inside a V app. If you don't, I just actually tried without doing it once. And you get weird, strange errors where your none of your colors work. Everything's going to be white and ugly. And you're going to see some weird issues. So make sure you always wrap everything in V app. So I'm going to use this V form. And what this V form does is it's basically this is the way you do forms inside your Beautify app. And it gives you some, some nice features. But the one thing I want to do is this is just normal view is just this V model and put this to valid. And what this is going to do, since we have wrapped everything in a V form, any of our form elements on the, on the page, if they are valid or not, will trigger this valid to be either true or false. So, because we're going to add some rules in. So let's keep going. So we have a sign in. Let's go ahead and just save it. Make sure it shows up. We'll refresh the page here. Cool. We have our sign in. Nothing special here. We'll come back. And now we are adding a disabled submit button. So what this is telling us that this will be disabled unless the uh, form is valid. And also I put color primary here. And you notice in that options file, I set the color to primary. So since I put color primary, it should be that uh, purple color. So if we save it, um, right now the form isn't valid. We're actually getting an error because property or method val is not defined on the instance because um, we haven't done it yet. But we'll, we'll add that in it soon. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and add in a text field. So the way you do text fields is you do v dash text dash field. And then we're going to have it be a type password. We're going to put the label password. So you can add a bunch of things to it. So this is a counter. So it's going to actually count how many characters the user is putting in. And then we're going to add some rules here. Now, these aren't defined yet, but I'll show you how that, that works. So rules is, by the way, we're going to bind it. So that's the colon here. So what's going to look at, it's going to look for every, some things in our default view extend here. It's going to look for this required function and a minimum length function. And we define that inside the data object. And we can pass values to it. And then we'll create another text field with a, one called username. The type's going to be email. Let me make this a little bigger. That's, I'm going to have to add a counter to it as well. And then we're going to have rules to it. Uh, so it's going to just have required. So now let's go in and actually define things inside our script here. So once again, I'm using TypeScript, but this looks pretty much exactly the same with a little bit differences if you're just using normal view out of the box. So we have our data object. And then inside our data object, we're always returning something. So this is our return. So this is our valid. So that is this, where we did this Viva model valid. This is a two-way data binding. So that means when this changes, so does this. Let me see if I save it now if it'll load. It might give us an error. OK, so required. We haven't created our functions yet, so let's do that. So here's our minimum length function. Um, it's going to take two, property, uh, two values, a property type and a minimum length. And what this is saying, by the way, this is this is V. It's we expect a string to come in. If it exists, if V exists and the length is greater than min length, which is a passed in number and it's a type number, then it this is just true. If it this isn't true, if this returns falsy, 
then we're going to return this text that says property type must be less than min length characters. And then we're going to create the required. <coughs> so the required is just really simple property type any. We're going to return v, which once is a string. And by the way, these are called ES6 arrow functions, if you don't know. And then we're just checking if the length is greater than zero. Otherwise, you must input a property type. And that, that should be it. So let me save it. And I'm going to do a hard refresh here. Cool. Here's our sign, and we don't got any errors in our console, so that's good. So let's see how this works. So if I start typing something in, you see, by the way, this purple accent. That's because we uh, set it up as being purple. And uh, that works. If I delete it out, then I get you must input a name. And by the way, the submit button, this is grayed out. It's disabled. Because if we go back here, we had this button, color primary, but it's disabled and valid has to be valid. And it's not. So let's put a username in. Now password, we set it up so it has to be at least five characters long, which is good. So we only have, if we just put in one character, we get an error. Password must be at least five characters long. If we delete it, you must input a password. So it kind of takes the first one that fails and then displays that to you first. So now if we add in, if we add in more than five characters, cool. Now everything is working correctly. Our submit button works. Um, we have our username, we have our password. By the way, here's the character count. Oh, don't worry about this. This is just a, this is just my last pass that's installed. But you can see here, everything is working as we expect it. And that's it. So we don't have any errors in the console here. Everything seems to be working fine. All right, so let me know if you guys have any more questions. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you guys can hit that like button and share this with your friends if you found it helpful. Thanks.